my channel. If you're new here, my name is Tracy with Scrappy's Rustics. My style is very eclectic. It's definitely less trendy and more organic. And I like to, I like old things, vintage things. I love to turn new things to make them look old. And in this video, we're going to do IOD paint inlays. I really go over it extensively. I know there's a lot of people out there who may have them in their stash right now. They're thinking about buying them. They're not sure how to use them. I realize they're new, they're innovative, they're different. If you are a perfectionist, the paint, IOD paint inlays are not for you. They are just not because they will not be perfect. They will be unexpected. They will be very rustic and whatnot. So I'm going to do my best to go over every, it's, it's a process. They are not hard. It's just a process. You've got to do this, 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 and this in order to achieve the look. I hope you enjoy the video. We are starting out with a board we picked up at Hobby Lobby. It is four foot by two foot and we're using black stain. When I did pick it up, it was 40 or 50% off. I want to say it was like 22 bucks and then half the price. Totally worth it because this sign is just huge. It is just plain pine on both sides. So I decided to stain it uh, completely black both sides because it is going outdoors. I had all intentions of crackling this first and I totally forgot. So we end up doing a di different type of crackle um, technique in the end, which ultimately ended up being less messy and came out exactly how I wanted it. This is the IOD paint inlay, Gregory's catalog. It is eight pages. It's a big one, y'all. I used part of this on a dresser and the dresser was a little bit smaller than this. So some of these pieces have been used uh, more than one, or this is their second use. So paint inlays can be used more than once, sometimes two, three, four times, depending on how much they transferred the first time, what color paint you used, um, a lot of variables, but they are reusable. Uh, so that's the beauty of them. So what you want to do very first off is once you have your surface, you really need to lay out your plan. Now, if you're just, I suggest if you're starting this out for the very first time and you've never done a paint inlay, you want to do something on a small scale um, just to get a feel for it. It's amazing how much you can learn when you do something for yourself just once. A lot of times you can watch someone do it till you're blue in the face, but you really just got to get in there and just go for it. I mean, you will learn something good, bad, and different. You will learn something, I promise. So um, I, when I did the dresser, I ended up making a mistake and I had to cut my big pieces down into smaller pieces, uh, which is fine. Um, it ended up working out, just made it a little bit more work for myself because my, my pieces were smaller, but it is what it is. And here I am, um, I'm trying to get this to fit exactly. And you must do a dry run because the paint inlay is what it is, is that is acrylic paint inlaid on a carrier sheet. And I would say the sheet is comparable to like a parchment paper. It does have grid lines, so that makes it nice for you to, you know, cut a nice straight line. Um, but you lay these in wet paint. So you definitely want to know, have a plan before you go laying your pet, your wet paint down and whatnot. So there's the two. I, was, I wasn't I was sure if I should do that retail catalog or the Gregory's catalog. I ultimately decided on doing the Gregory's. Um, so once you have everything the way you want it and you know you have a plan, you want to paint your surface as if it's perfect, like you're ready to go. Um, you don't need to put another layer on. It's just you're satisfied with it because you only get one shot. Once you lay down this, um, once you lay down your wet paint and you put your inlay in it, that's kind of it. You've got to let it sit there and marinate and do its thing um, because the paint is actually going to inlay from the carrier sheet into your wet paint. Now I am doing little sections. Y'all, this is a very big project. This is a lengthy video, but I really think it's beneficial for anyone who isn't sure how to do a paint inlay, has been curious. You may have one in your stash and you're just, you're afraid to use it. I, I tried to do every step that I could and some a little, a couple you know, for you to see it a couple of times. Just, I want you to have the confidence to try it. I want, by the time this video is over, I want you to be able to say to yourself, I could do that. And if you need to go back and get a little refresher, then then you should do so. Um, we don't know what we don't know. But in all honesty, these paint and laser are not hard. It's just a process. You must do this, this, and this, like I said in the beginning of the video, in order to achieve results. Uh, it will be rustic. It will not be perfect as well. So what I'm doing here is because I'm going sheet by sheet, of course, if you just do a little one, you know, it'll be much easier for you. But as I'm going sheet by sheet, I am just doing a little section of wet paint at a time um, because it must be wet paint in order for 
the inlay to work properly. You can use a clear coat, but that will be for a different, um, a different video. It is basically the same process. However, removing it is a little bit different. Um, so I try to, um, because these are being butted up next to each other, um, you want to make sure you get your wet paint right up to um, the the next, the one beside it where the M is, um, where I'm putting it down right there. Now, technically, you don't have to wet, have wet paint in your entire square, but you do have to have wet paint in, like, in the words part. However, I find it, I have better results when I do my entire square because I like when my, I feel like the thicker the paint, I try to do a variation of thicker and thinner paints because the thicker your paint, you kind of get like wrinkles and stuff. Most of the time I go back with a dark wax or a darker wax when I'm done. And I feel like those imperfections give the wax something to stick to. So that's why I do my whole square instead of just the wording itself. Okay, so there, it's wet on the bottom. So now we want to give it the, the, the inlay a, a better chance. So I'm taking a spray, a mister bottle, and I'm misting the top of these and I'm going over it with a brayer because I just want this inlay to get the most um, attachment from surface to surface that it can. So there's a close up, but you can see the wrinkles. So if you see wrinkles and you see variations, that is perfectly fine. You didn't mess up. That is how it's going to look. So that's why I took my time with this video to show you, you know, if you get halfway through and you're like, oh no, there's wrinkles. It's okay. It's supposed to be this way. Um, if you do not have a spray bottle or a brayer, you can simply use like um, a wet rag, a damp rag, or a paper towel. Um, get a bowl of water and, and dip your rag in it or your paper towel and just kind of do the same thing. Just kind of dab. You don't want to saturate this stuff because the beauty with it, one of the trick, I shouldn't say beauty. One of the tricky things about a paint inlay is that is paint on the carrier side. So if you get it wet, it's going to activate. Um, so you have to be mindful when you're doing this, um, where you're spraying your water. Um, make sure you don't have any paint lays that are getting ready to lay down um, facing up with the paint side and you get water on them because it will activate. So um, in the end, the most important thing you need to do, and I did not leave, I need to tell you because I didn't video that. I don't know what happened, but when your paint inlay is completely done and dry, you need to spray it with a clear coat of some sort, just the paint inlay itself. You cannot use any type of clear coat with a brush and brushing motions because it will activate the paint and it will smear. I've done it. So if you don't have, I, if you can't use like an aerosol can, spray clear can, you can mix like a DIY patina in water or a polycrylic in water 50-50, shake it and just spritz it, let it dry. And after that, you can do whatever you want to it. You just have to spray seal it that one time just to lock it in so the water doesn't reactivate it. So as you can see, every single one, I did the same process. I put down my wet paint, I laid my inlay in, I went out, misted it, I went over with brayer and I moved on to the next one. So it's just repetitive. I did pretty good. There's a lot of pages here. I had to bend some over because I, you know, it's hard to lay something down in wet paint. See, I was over there about an, uh, an inch but I made it work. As long as your paint side is in, in the wet paint itself, you're fine. Um, it's just a really cool process. I mean, I love to make old things or new things look old. Like I'm, I feel like that's one of the things I'm good at. I have a hard time messing with anything that's old because I, I just think the integrity, I don't want to mess it up. And I love it and know that it has a story. And, um, but like I said, making new things look uh, old. I love that. Okay, so with the paint inlays, you can let this dry for months. Doesn't matter. It, nothing's going to happen to it until you wet it and you're going to peel it off. It has to be wet. And I, you don't want it soaking wet, but you want it wet. During this process, as you're peeling it off, if you feel any hesitation, any pull, any, any of that, stop, collaborate, and listen. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> I can't help when I say that. Stop. So you want to stop. Missed it again. Because you want to, it should be smooth. It should come off nice and smooth. No tug, no pull, no anything. So just stop. Missed it again. Or if you have to dab your paper towel, go ahead and do that. Um, it's a pretty mind-blowing, uh, this is the best part in my opinion. The, the way this looks is pretty mind-blowing because it's like a mirror image. And again, these can be reused again. So that is really the cool part. The whole top um, that where it says Gregory's catalog, that is a second use for me. Um, so 
it, it goes to show um, it, it can be used and I can use it again. Um, every time it's going to be a little different. You can use this in any style paints, uh, acrylic paint, chalk paint. It just has to be wet paint is all it has to be. Um, so I'm having a little trouble. Uh, there's not much wording on there, but I, as I said, I painted my the entire carrier page in there. So um, I had a little trouble picking it off there and I'm feeling some hesitation. So I'm going to go ahead and mist it again. Make sure you have a place to lay these down, wet side up, face up, let them dry, and then you can put them back. And when they're dry, you put them back in your, um, wherever you're storing them uh, for use again. And uh, I just hope by watching this that you get, get a little confidence that you can do this too. Um, I am going to show you a close-up of, of this here. My E was over my M, so I had a little trouble. Look how it doesn't even look like it's used. Isn't that crazy? My fan was blowing there, so... Um, it's pretty crazy when you peel that off and it doesn't even look like it's it's been used. Now, as I said before, your variations of thick paint and um, thick paint, thinner paint, the way you do your brush strokes, all that will matter in your inlay. But I personally, I like, I just do what I do and it comes out how it comes out. Um, if you want to, a different look, you can certainly test and see what different paint strokes um, give you a different effect. But you will see when I pull this one off that exactly which way my brush strokes went because you can, you can kind of see them. Um, had I went the other way, it, it might have shown like a crisscross or a crosshatched type of um, image. So this is the best part, y'all, right here. So I try my best to give you a close-up. This is so cool. Again, you want to make sure it's nice and smooth coming off. So that paint actually inlaid into your wet paint like that is just so trippy to me uh, look at it it's just I, I love it i love it and i do not think you could really mimic this look any other way I i'm not sure how you would um i guess you could do it with some type of um printer image and do the reverse you know mod podge type of thing but this really is not hard like i said it's just a process it's one of the th only things i can finish in a timely ma <laughs> manner Nothing like this big. I did this over a few days, just took my time and, and did it. But look how stinking cool that is. I just love it. I love this look. Um, it's exactly what I needed. So I went and sprayed the whole thing. Again, when you're spraying this, be mindful of all the pages you've already peeled off because you don't want to get anything saturated because that paint is still active until you seal it. And it will reactivate and it will smear if you get it wet and smudge it and whatnot. So I'm in super fast motion here, peeling these off. And look how cool that thing looks. I'm so excited. So that very top, as I said before, has been used once before on a dresser. The dresser was, I think it was a little bit smaller than this. Might be the same size. So I slowed it down so you could get one more cool of that trippiness of it coming off. And uh, yeah, this is pretty mind-blowing stuff. It's, uh, it's one of its kind, that's for sure. And uh, there it is um, before it's sealed. And again, I just used a polycrylic clear seal. I'm giving you a close-up because I want you to see there are imperfections. There are uh, missing pieces. There are lumps of paint and paint gathered. Um, that That's to be expected. Um, I, I've never seen a perfect paint lay, inlay. Um, some of the smaller ones, you can get it pretty perfect. You can get it pretty perfect. But if perfection is your thing, I just, I don't think you would be very happy with, with a product like this is, is really what I'm saying. So this is IOD paint inlays Gregory's catalog so in the beginning I told you I, I, I meant to crackle it and I totally forgot <laughs> before I started painting white and doing all that I was like oh no so this is the IOD vintage uh vintage textured stamps y'all this thing is awesome it's four different types of textures in one stamp I cut mine up and um, I always start with um well the the black around the frame was too perfect so I ended up using some white ink in that that there's four sl four pieces of that particular stamp that give you like a chippy look. So I did the white all around the top of the frame. Forgot to do the sides, so you'll see that later. Um, so I did that with white all the way around, and then I usually start when I do. I like to do a crackle. I start with um, stone gray. Um, if stone gray isn't dark enough for you, then you can move up to black. But you don't want to go to black and be like oh. It's too dark. It's kind of hard to, to go down from there, but at least from going light, light to up, you can go. So I always start with this crackle one, and I like to use the gray, stone gray. And I am an IOD stockist, so all of this stuff can be found on my website at scrappiesrustics.com. So when I do stuff like this, I don't intentionally get ink 
all over the stamp pad. Um, I don't intentionally touch every part of the stamp itself to get full coverage because I don't, I don't want full coverage. I want it to look realistic and not like I just put a bunch of squares down with the same exact pattern over and over and over. And as you see, after I ink it, I'm using it twice. So I'll get a lighter spot in one area and there you see it. It's very subtle, but just enough to give it that aged look. So I go over the entire thing with that one. And then I go back um, haphazardly here and there with that one there. I don't know what I call that one. It's just a type of um, crackle in a sense. But this is a really easy, clean way, fast way to, to achieve a crackle or an aged look. Um, I use these quite often. And um, it, it's just, look how cool that looks. I mean, sorry about the shadow too. I can't, there's nothing I can do in my room. I have those overhead lights and it doesn't matter where I stand, I get a shadow. But like I said in the beginning, I really want you guys to see this process so um, you know what to expect if you do it for yourself. So I ended up going in with a third stamp um, just because I felt like it needed a little bit more and um, it, I achieved the, the look that I wanted because it was just way too white. I could have went in with some dark wax um, or brown wax or some type of wax, but I, I wasn't really feeling that for this project. I was feeling more of an aged crackled sign just kind of hanging out there on the side of an old industrial building for years and getting weathered and, um, you know, just trying to make it look like it's been outside. So here's where I, f I realized I didn't do the sides and they're perfectly black and that doesn't go with any of this piece at all. So uh, it's kind of hard to, <laughs> to hold the camera and everything is off. So I feel like my brush is on my piece, but it's not. So I try to do my best here. To I all I'm doing is dry brushing it with some white paint. And uh, it, it gave me the look that I wanted. But I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something. If you ever have any questions, please do not hesitate to ask me or get with me. I would be more than thrilled to help you. So there we have it, you guys. Um, it looks so great in its new home. Thank you so much for watching. And I hope wow. you enjoyed it. I hope you guys enjoyed that video. That was a big piece. And I am so pleased with it. It came out pretty awesome. It certainly does not look like I just made that and it's brand spanking new, but it does look exactly as I envisioned it in my head on our new screen porch, right above the couch, right where it belongs. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope if you had any fears or doubts about the IOD paint inlays that now you feel a little more confident about it. I hope <clears throat> you like my style and you become a new subscriber. Hit that bell so you know when I upload new videos. Also, I come live often. So if you like that type of interactivity, I'd love to have you on our live as well. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.